Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video I'm going to show you how to enable Windows subsystem for Linux. This enables you to run Linux on your local machine as though it was its own dedicated VM. It kind of is, it's a bit like an LXC within Proxmox, whereby we can run a full Linux distribution with integration to things like bash shells, scripts, etc. We can run all the native Linux commands, but it's probably got the benefits of all of the horsepower of your desktop, plus you can basically just alt tab and you're back into the Windows environment. So let's have a quick look through the documentation and then I'll show you how to set up and enable this and I'll give you an example of it being used. And so if we look over on the Microsoft website, we can see all of the benefits that I've just mentioned. So we can store files on an isolated Linux file system. We can run command tools like bash. We can do all of the native commands you would expect and you can also do additional Linux distributions and additional Linux software. You can even get graphical applications in this by installing extensions like the GNOME desktop, and that might be powerful if there is a specific use case or a specific application that you use that's only available in Linux. I use this on occasion with my previous video where I showed you VS Code to actually remote to a remote machine. But this might be useful if you wanted to do some local testing but didn't want to set up a dedicated VM. Now in this setup, as with an LXC, the host's kernel is actually being shared. So you should be aware that there might be some security concerns here in edge cases. Broadly speaking, it's going to be fine, but you do also have the opportunity to set up a dedicated WSL with a segmented kernel. So let's head over to the installation, which thankfully is really straightforward, and it's as simple as one PowerShell command, and that is the WSL install. Now by default, this is going to install Ubuntu, which is the one I'm going to use and the one that I'm most comfortable with. But if you run the following command here, WSL list and online, you will get a list of different Linux distributions. So you can choose the one that you want. So let's open up PowerShell now as an administrator and let's kickstart this process. It will require a reboot of your machine. So now we're over in PowerShell. Let's copy this command here just to make sure we can see everything that's available to us. So if we do this list, you can see that there are many options. Probably your eyes will be drawn instantly to Kali Linux. We might cover that in a later video. But yeah, basically you just need to choose whichever one you want. As I mentioned, I'm just going to do the default, which is Ubuntu. So that will be WSL dash dash install. And now when I run this, it's going to enable some features on your machine. Primarily, it's going to set up VMs. So you can see it's installing the virtual machine platform. It's asking me for administrative privileges to do the host processes. I'm going to click yes. Now it's going to actually download the Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is going to take a little bit of time for me because my internet's terrible. But hopefully that will be spun up really quickly and it's going to require a reboot afterwards. So now it's doing the installation of the Ubuntu itself. And when this is finished, we should be ready to do the reboot. So now that process is finished and it's reminded me that I need to reboot my machine for this to take effect. I'm now going to reboot my machine and I'll see you on the other side. So now I've rebooted my machine and it's automatically popped up with the following. So I'm going to create my username and password just like I would with a normal virtual machine. And now hopefully when I submit this we should be logged in as that user. So that's going to go away and create all the home directories, set up all the encryption, etc. And yeah, we're now into this virtual machine. So you can see that I'm James at the home PC. And if we do standard things like if we do an IPA, we'll see that we've got the standard output that we would expect from Ubuntu. So great, we've now got effectively an Ubuntu server running on our local desktop. And for me, that's my most powerful machine and you get pretty much parallel performance with this method using WSL2. So what's the implication of this? Well, it gives you a localized instance of Ubuntu to test things on, and also things like my K3S script, my RKE2 script, where we had to set up a remote admin machine. You could actually have this WSL instance now as your local jump box. Not strictly the best because it's not technically a jump box if it's on your machine, but you get the idea, this is a home lab, we can make some conveniences. And so what does that mean? Well, 
Back in our good old friend VS Code, you'll be pleased to know that there's an extension for taking advantage of this. So if we install the WSL extension, we should hopefully now be able to see the WSL that Ubuntu running on my local machine and use that as a development environment. So with any luck, we can get started with WSL. Let's click that. We need to open the menu here and I want to connect to WSL. And hopefully this is going to show me that Ubuntu we just installed. So if we click here, open a folder, here we go, home slash James. And now, yes, I trust it. Now I'm into that local machine running. So all of the things I've showed previously, whereby we've added, say, the certificates and things like that, we could add those all here and get it running. Now, that won't quite work without me tweaking the script first, but we could do things like connect to our Docker host through here, we could SSH into other machines, or we could even use this as a test space, all now with the power of VS Code. So hopefully this combined with my previous video where we used an actual remote and we took advantage of the Docker extensions and Kubernetes extensions, this is giving you some really powerful and flexible tools that you can use in all of your testing and all of your functional requirements. So now in an upcoming video, I'm gonna make use of this setup because I wanna focus on Terraform to actually help us by setting out our Proxmox infrastructure. This will still use things like a cloud init template, but we can actually make that an automated process. Then when we come to actually run the Terraform script process, we can use this WSL instead of having to have a separate discrete VM jump box, which is great. I get all the performance of my local machine, which is my most performant device. Plus it means that I can save hardware and resources on my server because I don't need that additional admin machine. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe. Let me know if this is something that you're going to use or you already are. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.